Hey, good morning, guys. <laughs> Hump Day, October the 7th, 2020. Good morning to all of you. I'm running a little bit late here, so I'm going to get right into it. After I put down some caffeine, and you do the same. Come on. Obviously, I don't know what time you're watching this video, but I'm sure it's not early in the morning like it should be. So, uh, whatever the case may be, Enjoy another cup of coffee with me. Yes, I got coffee in there. There we go. Let's go. Ah, birthday's today on October 7th. And it is a nice day out there today over here in Tar City, Pennsylvania. The sun's out. The birds are chirping. I had Sir Prince out earlier. And uh, there goes my phone. You know, Murphy's Law, I can have this thing on, and I, I can be sitting here for hours on end, and it doesn't chirp or make any kind of noise or anything, but as soon as I do something, it starts. So, I just, hopefully I shut it all down, I don't know. But anyway, as I was saying, I took Sir Prince outside, uh, took him for his little walk, he did his thing. Brought him inside, made him some breakfast. He ate his breakfast, and what's he doing right now? Yeah, it's nap time. <laughs> so, he's laying down. <laughs> so, uh, birthdays today. Let's get on with the birthdays. Simon Cowell's birthday is today. You know Simon Cowell. Uh, he's 61 years young today. He was born in the United Kingdom, which we all know that, right? And his net worth is uh, five. Uh, five. $51 million. Excuse me. And it said uh, on the research I did that most of his uh, worth is because of the the uh, uh, musical shows that he does. You know, uh, what is it? America's Got Talent or whatever. And uh, uh, I don't know. England's Got Talent or wh wherever he's at. But that's where he makes most of his money. So, uh, Happy birthday, Simon. Uh, another birthday today, uh, the rocker, <laughs> uh, John Mellencamp, a.k.a. Johnny Cougar, a.k.a. Johnny Cougar Mellencamp. <laughs> He's 69 years young today. Uh, his height is 5 feet 8 inches. Every time I've seen him on TV, he looks so much shorter than that. You know, uh, I thought he was just a short guy, such as myself, but... 5'8", that's not too bad you know, for his height. I'm 5'4 on a good day, you know. His net worth uh, is $30 million. Um, he's been married a number of times, I think three or four times. And he has, I believe he has five children uh, between various marriages, I'm sure. But he's got five kids from what I understand. And... Uh, he was born in Seymour, Indiana. So eventually we're going to get down and we'll do a three-day weather forecast in honor of John Mellencamp over there, in uh, his birthplace of Seymour, Indiana. Another birthday today, a good-looking lady, Tony Braxton. Yes, <laughs> 53 years young today. Um, her net worth is, if I got this right, is it $10 million? Yeah, $10 million right now. And uh, she's from Seven, S-E-V-E-N, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Seven or Seven? Seven, Maryland. So uh, happy birthday, Tony. Happy birthday, John. And happy birthday, Simon. All of you. You know, I wish all of you a very happy birthday. And, of course, uh, I'm sure we all heard the bad news uh um, yesterday, uh, Mr. Eddie Van Halen, he passed away. He was 65 years old. He passed away yesterday. Um, he was battling uh, uh, throat cancer for a lot of years. I didn't know that. Of course, I don't follow much on, on Eddie Van Halen. I, I like Van Halen's music, but uh, um, it wasn't the kind of music that I would use. Not a lot of it. For uh, when I would DJ uh, at clubs, you know, dance music kind of thing. Um, 
I did like uh, Jump. I think that was the name of the song. But uh, uh, may uh, Eddie Van Halen rest in peace. 65 years young, uh, passed away of throat cancer. And he was a heavy smoker, by the way. And he, and he said that he thinks uh, all his problems from the throat cancer... Oh, hello, buddy. I'll get you outside in a minute. All his... Uh, uh, there he is. Let me see if I can get him. There's my boy. All uh, Eddie Van Halen's uh, problems with his uh, throat cancer was from... He said that besides being a heavy smoker, <laughs> that he would take his uh, uh, metal guitar picks and he'd always have them in his mouth. So it, he was trying to lean into that being the reason that he got throat cancer. Do we know that for sure? Don't know that. Do we know he was a heavy smoker? Yeah, he was. Do we know that the cancer cause or the, the smoking caused the cancer? Good chance, but we don't know that for sure. Okay? All right, enough of that. We can uh, debate on throat cancer and smoking and all that uh, until we're blue in the face, but uh, who knows? You know, I I've known people that have smoked five, six packs of cigarettes for years on end, and they're uh, healthy as a bull, you know. Then I've known people that uh, got cancer from smoking uh, one and a half packs a day kind of thing, or, or one pack a day, you know. So it's hard to say. Let's put it down. But I will say, I'm smoke-free now, and I, I'm glad I am, because uh, uh, for a while there, uh, I was starting to do a lot of huffing and puffing, and a lot of wheezing. Um, I'm smoke-free now, I want to say, at least five years, maybe longer than that. But uh, it's helped my health immensely. So uh, if any of you people are considering to quit smoking, go ahead and do it. And you know what? And I, I stopped smoking many times. It's not easy to quit. So if you pick it up again and you smoke, just keep doing it over and over. Quit, quit, quit. Eventually, you'll stop altogether. Now, that's not saying that I'm sure I could pick up a cigarette and get back into the same routine. Uh, anymore, I don't have uh, very much of a craving at all for a cigarette, but every once in a while, you know, they're far and few between now, but every once in a while, if I'm around friends that are smoking, you know, and I just get that light whiff of smoke, I know I could sit there and, hey, give me a cigarette, and I'd start all over again. But as I said, I, I'm glad I uh, stopped. Um, I've, I've saved a lot of money. Yeah, I have. I can't prove it because I don't have the pile anymore. Uh, whatever I'm saving the money on, I'm spending it on other things. Such as good coffee, Starbucks. Okay. And no, I, I'm not being paid by Starbucks to, uh, pr uh, you know, to uh, uh, promote them. Okay. <laughs> Cheers. Let's go. Okay. And speaking of Starbucks, my daughter Tina is going to love this one. Today is National uh, Frappy Day. I hope that's how you pronounce it. I don't know. I I'm not that kind of a coffee guy or coffee person, whatever. F-R-A-P-P-E day. <laughs> Apparently that's some kind of coffee or an espresso and it's usually mixed with whipped cream. Now, Tina, you know, she'll go to uh, Dunkin' and she'll get whatever her drink is and, and she'll all, you know, drive up to the window and say, I want blah, 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 and no whip. <laughs> so, I don't know. One time she took me into Starbucks a number of years ago for the first time I've ever been into Starbucks. <laughs> I mean, I'm just a basic kind of, uh, give me a, uh, a cup of Wawa coffee or a, a Mini Mart coffee, you know, that kind of thing. Well, I went into a Starbucks with her and her mother uh, a number of years ago. <laughs> and I stood in line and I looked up at that wall. And my mouth dropped and I was just going. 
and Tina was looking at me, and her mother was looking at me, and oh, they got a big kick out of it. And I looked at Tina, and I said, I just want a cup of coffee, you know. <laughs> so uh, she went up to the to the person behind the counter and said, uh, get him a blah, blah, blah coffee, you know. <laughs> but give me a cup of coffee. I don't need to know all these different mixtures and this and that, and I don't need the pretty little swirl in the cup, and I want a cup of coffee, you know. <laughs> I'm that guy. It's got to be a strong coffee, but I want a cup of coffee, just black. All right, that's enough of that rambling. In the meantime, let's put down some more coffee. Let's go. So, uh, for all you frappe, frappy drinkers out there, <laughs> today's your day. Enjoy it. Go out and get a, a coffee or, a, or a espresso with whip. <laughs> and Tina, today's your day. Enjoy it. Uh, let's see. Okay, we're going to go to uh, the three-day weather forecast. Uh, where uh, John Mellencamp was born in uh, Seymour, Indiana. So we'll go there. Uh, what was, uh, if you're a, a John Mellencamp uh, enthusiast, his music, which I like his music, I really do. Um, what do you think, uh, well, and he's got a number of them, but what's it, your go-to song for uh, John Mellencamp? Send me a private message or Put it down here in the comments section. And make sure you put in John Kel Mellencamp. The song I like by him is, and it might be two or three. Put it down that way. Don't just put the name of the song because people might just uh, read the comments and not watch the video and they won't have a clue on what you're talking about. But uh, I liked uh, uh, Jack and Diane. I did like that one. But uh, Pink Houses. I like pink houses. Well, I'd crank that thing up out in the club and uh, back in the day. And I mean, I'll tell you what, some of those people, they, they got up and started dancing around and clapping and carrying on to pink houses. Uh-huh. All right, enough of that rambling. So anyway, today, or three-day weather forecast in Seymour, Indiana. Wednesday, today, uh, October 7th, 2020. 82 for a high. 46 for a low, and sunny today in Seymour, Indiana. Thursday in Seymour, 77 for a high, 51 for a low, and mostly sunny. Friday in Seymour, Indiana, 81 for a high, 60 for a low, and mostly cloudy. Uh, I'm going to have to do some research on, on Seymour, Indiana. I, I know nothing about that town, um, if it's still a little town, you know, uh, I'm sure it was like a blue-collar town, but uh, I wanted to do some research and see uh, what uh, made it famous, if anything. Uh, and from where I live over here in the uh, central Pennsylvania area, I could do a road trip up to Seymour. And yeah, maybe uh, one day I'll do that, you know, if uh, any of you guys want to do a road trip with me up to Seymour, just for uh, the heck of it, you know. Okay, <laughs> let's go to Holtwood, Pennsylvania. That's where my new camper's at, in the Holtwood area. Today, Wednesday, uh, October the 7th, 77 for a high in Holtwood, Pennsylvania. 49 for a low, mostly sunny. Thursday in Holtwood, Pennsylvania, 65 for a high, 43 for a low, and again, mostly sunny. Friday in Holtwood, Pennsylvania, 68 for a high, 54 for a low, and sunny again. You know, that's not bad. Three days of uh, uh, nice weather over there in Holtwood, Pennsylvania. And I'll tell you what, uh, do some research on Holtwood if you're not from this area. It is a nice country. I'll tell you what, there, there's uh, cornfields on either sides of the, the back country roads, uh, uh, a lot of Amish farmland down that way. It's just, oh, rolling hills and nice, real nice. And it's not too far from where my daughter lives, right here, Lidditz, Pennsylvania. Apparently, it's about 16 miles from Lidditz, give or take. Uh, Saturday, did I say that? Uh, in Holtwood, 
uh, not so good on Saturday, unfortunately. 71 for a high. Now the weather's, uh, the temperature's nice. 59 for a low on Saturday, but 40% chance of showers. So, you know, if you want to travel around Holtwood, Pennsylvania, uh, your best days are today, Thursday, and Friday. You know, so there you go. Um, Cape May, New Jersey, for the next four days in Cape May, there's no rain in the forecast. Uh, the temperature is going to be in the 60s, uh, high 60s, low 70s, you know, but no rain. So uh, if you're uh, going to jaunt down to the Cape May area, you got four nice days of uh, uh, weather down at the shore points, you know. So go and enjoy yourself. That's it, folks. That's all I have. Oh, 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 <laughs> here. You know I like my biscottis. Well, you guys got to try this out. This is as good as biscottis, but they're, they're real thin, as you can see by the picture, I think. Oh, wrong picture. We'll go with this picture. I mean, they're like a Melba toast, but not Melba toast. I mean, these are very addictive, you know, and especially that with, uh, with the pistachios in them. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, and again, no, I'm not being paid to promote this. Uh, this was given to me by uh, a young lady, and uh, she got me two boxes, and uh, I've been through one box already, but uh, these are great, you know, great for snacking on. They're great with your coffee. They're great with a Coca-Cola. <laughs> yeah. No, and I don't dunk these, but, I mean, they snap. They're like Melba Toast, but try them out. And if you do try them out, tell me what you think. Okay, that's enough of that. Now, uh, let's see, what did I do uh, yesterday? I made my crock pot cube steak. Um, you know, I, I let it... Uh, slow and low in, in my crock pot for about six and a half hours. I got uh, six uh, cube steaks and what you're gonna do with this uh, recipe you, you can pull it up on YouTube or or Google it and uh, there's different forms of this recipe but the one I got I did it this way and you layer it just like you would layer lasagna but uh, it said for me to get six cube steaks which I went out and I bought you know, a, a family pack of cube steaks, and, and there was uh, actually four large ones in there, and, and I cut two of them down to make six, okay? But uh, you get the six cube steaks, you want a crock pot, okay? You want one medium onion, and uh, cut your onions up so they're this nice thin onion rings, and, you know, break it apart, and layer it, take your cube steak, I'm getting ahead of myself, but uh, take your cube steak, layer your onions on the top, take your cube steak on top of the onions, layer some more onions, cube steak, layer some more onions. You get the picture. But now what you want to do, you got your cu six cube steaks, your crock pot on low heat, uh, six hours, six, six and a half, you know, or I think you can do four hours on high, but I did low and slow. And you know, cube steak sometimes is kind of uh, chewy and tough. <laughs> this stuff, I mean, it's broken down and oh, it's uh, so good. Um, okay, one medium onion, cut it into you know little onion rings, layer it on a cube steak. One can of cream of chicken soup. Well, I got two cans. I put that in because I made a big pot. I really did. Then. Uh, another two cans of cream of celery so you mix you know those cans of your cream of chicken and your uh, cream of celery mix it all together and you're gonna put that in your crock pot now what I did I I put that down as my base and then I put my cube steak on top okay because uh, I was worried whether it was gonna burn my cube steak or uh, my uh, my uh, soup, but on low and slow, no, it didn't. So my base is my uh, soup first, and then cube steak. You can try it the other way if you want. 
then you'll also want to get one packet of Lipton cream or a Lipton uh, onion soup mix. Mix that in. So I put that in in my crock pot, and it says get a one half can of water, soup can water. So I, obviously I got one whole can of soup can water because I doubled the amount of my chicken and cream of celery soup, okay? Uh, I put it, uh, um, layer it, uh, cooked it in my crock pot on low and slow. I did six and a half hours. And I'll tell you what, it turned out nice. Now, one of my friends was doing this, and, and she said what she did, she got some cornstarch because it was, the gravy wasn't thick enough for her. And I haven't done that yet. Uh, my gravy is thick enough as far as I'm concerned, but to each her own. So she put cornstarch in to thicken up her gravy, and then she also used, uh, oh, shoot, oh, what's the, the ingredients called now? Um, kitchen bouquet to darken it up, you know? And uh, I, bet, I bet you that was really good. So what I'm going to do with this, my, uh, my uh, crock pot cube steak, okay, I'm going to plate it up. I'm going to get some uh, mashed potatoes and some corn. And on top of my mashed potatoes and corn on my mashed potatoes, I'll put my cube steak, my gravy, and my onions on top of that. Oh, <laughs> talk about being in Fat City. That's my recipe for you. Try it out. Tell me what you think. Uh, if you improvised and did something different, tell me what you did differently. Because I'm always looking for different recipes, okay? The next thing I want to do, I, I got it already. I bought it yesterday when I was out getting my cube steak. I'm going to do some uh, um, um, beef stew. I got my uh, beef cubes. I got my carrots, my onions, frozen peas, you know. And again, you can pull that recipe, beef broth. Uh, you can pull that up on uh, either YouTube or Google. But uh, we're getting into that kind of weather. So, uh, you know, I, I want some uh, beef stew. And then I got my uh, crock pot cube steak. And what I'm going to do with my crock pot cube steak, since I have such a, a large amount, I, I'm going to get uh, my Tupperware containers. And I'll fill up, you know, individual little Tupperware containers where it will be enough for a, maybe a serving or two. And then I'll freeze it. And I'll pull it out as needed for myself. That's the lazy man's way of doing it. And I'll do the same with my beef stew. There you go, pal. Ladies, gentlemen, pals. <laughs> That's all I have. I hope all of you have a great day today. Yes, I am long-winded. I got uh, almost 24 minutes into this video. You guys have a great day today. I will talk with all of you later on. Oh, I got one other birthday I got to mention. Um... My uh, children's mother uh, and my wife, years and years ago, uh, her name's Paulette. She passed away a number of years ago, and today's her birthday. I want to wish her a happy birthday in heaven. We all miss you, Paulette. Yes, we do. I miss the times that you would come over here in this house and sit on that stool. When my granddaughter, Brianna, was here, she'd be over here visiting with Brianna. When, when uh, Paul had not so good a health, you know, uh, she passed away from cancer. But uh, she spent a lot of time here on the weekends uh, visiting with her granddaughter because uh, uh, Brianna meant so much to her. <sighs> great memories, really great memories. Happy birthday, Paulette. God bless you. Rest in peace. All right, folks, that's it. Let's put it down one more time. Cheers, Nostrovia and Lachaim. Say a prayer for Paulette, if you wouldn't mind. Okay? Uh, keep her in your thoughts. I thank you so much. Let's go. Be kind to one another, because we are not guaranteed tomorrow. Don't forget that. Love your family. Love your kids, your relatives, your grandkids, your nieces, your nephews, your brothers, your sister, sisters. You know, stay in touch with them. Let them know you love them. Even if they don't talk to you, 
Send them messages every now and then. I do. Okay, guys. I love you. On three, I'm going to punch you out. Thank your God for another day on earth. Pray to your God for peace on earth. And pray to our God that our president and our first lady gets well real soon. And anybody else that is uh, suffering with this uh, virus, say prayers for all of them. God bless you. On three now, big smile. Don't forget, smell the coffee. One, two, big smile. Peace.